How's it going guys? It's Rust Belt Collector here and today we are taking a look at, oh, I always say this, but another Halo uh, Infinite item. This is from the new Jazzwares line. This is part of the World of Halo scale world building collection. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but basically it's their three and three quarter inch uh, universal scale that they've created where they're going to have a lot more of the vehicles and a more diverse selection of characters, whereas like the 6.5 inch Spartan collection, as of right now, is focusing on purely Spartans, as the name suggests. I'm really excited to review this. This is actually the second vehicle I've gotten from the World of Halo line. I got the Warthog. I filmed the review of the Warthog and then the footage was bad and didn't upload it. So I need to re go back and like redo that, but for right now, we've got the Mongoose, We've got the Master Chief, we've got a rocket launcher. I mean, how cool is that? So let's take a look at this. Now, of course, this comes in the standard packaging. This is kind of what we're seeing with all the figures. Master Chief from Halo Infinite, Halo Infinite logo, Mongoose with Master Chief, picture window, all the stuff that comes with this. Then on the back, we have this really nice picture of the Master Chief. I've said this with pretty much all my reviews for the World of Halo line. I really think that they could do with like a, a lineup of the other figures that you can get in this scale on the back, you know, kind of like with what they do with the uh, Spartan collection. You need to have like all the different characters uh, that you can get single carded and the other vehicle packs. I just think that that would be a really big boost to the line, but that's just my opinion. And they've got a killer marketing team that's clearly doing something right with the Halo line. So. I don't know guys, you, I, I'm ju I just work here. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the packaging is really simple, but also very Halo. Like it doesn't have to be overly complex. It gives you what you need to know and then it shows off what you're actually you know, buying. And that's what really matters here. You're looking at this, you're interested in this, you're not really too concerned with the packaging, but it does have some really nice classic Halo vibes. But anyways, with all that said, let's pop the packaging open and see what it's like to have these in hand. And boom, there we have it. The Mongoose with Master Chief and a rocket launcher all out of the packaging and looking really, really good in hand. So starting off, it's pretty straightforward what this package comes with. Master Chief, Rocket Launcher, Mongoose. It does not come with one of these stands that usually comes with like the single carded releases, which is totally fine. Uh, you, get, you obviously get a vehicle, so he's most likely going to be posed on the vehicle. You don't need one of these. It also does not include a game code like we got with some of the other figures. But again, that's okay. I figured that was probably like a Wave 1 release thing, especially with the release of Halo Infinite, which got pushed back, but if you consider the original date that that was supposed to release, uh, it makes sense that Wave 1 would come with codes to coincide with the release of the game. Speaking of codes, I have a bunch of extra ones from the figures that I've purchased for these reviews and such. I've already activated my two, and so I'm giving away these extra codes, probably about one in every video that I do that's related to Halo. Um, so anyways, here is this code. You can redeem it on halowaypoint.com forward slash redeem and you'll get one of the two uh, Wicked Cool Toys exclusive skins or things for your character in Halo Infinite. But anyways, back to the figures here on hand. Let's start with the figure and first off his accessories, or rather accessory. He comes with a rocket launcher. This is a really cool sculpt. They did an excellent job replicating the rocket launcher from the game. The barrels are just a little bit warped upwards, but I'll just have to heat those up later and bend them back down or even just do it by hand now. It's from the packaging. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. These are molded in more of a, a rubbery plastic. You can kind of see they have a decent amount of flex to them, which I think is actually good, so you're not going to break these, especially at this small scale. And yeah, the sculpt is in no way damaged by the fact that this is uh, in a softer plastic. There is tons of detail packed into this, and I absolutely love it. Zooming in real close here, you can just see all the little bolt holes and things like that that are sculpted into this, as well as little embossed letters here that spell out SPNKR or Spanker. It's like the designation of this missile launcher. That is really, really cool, the amount of detail that they've packed into such a small weapon. And yeah, I definitely love it. Here also there is a peg that is to allow the weapon to peg onto the back of Master Chief or really any other character. 
That way, when he's on a vehicle or using another primary weapon, he doesn't have to have it just laying on the ground. It is attached to his back, and that is not going to fall out. Now, taking a look at the figure, it is a really nicely articulated, nicely sculpted figure. Lots of great detail packed all over this figure. I mean, there's just all kinds of armor tidbits and detail, weathering, little 117 insignia there, and it is just really, really awesome. I think this Jazzwares Wicked Cool Toys Halo line is like a new peak, a second renaissance, if you will, of 118 figures. I might be speaking a little soon, but I think that it's fair to say that when you have $10 action figures on the shelf in this scale, with this amount of detail and you know the kinds of accessories and everything that we're getting with them, I think it's fair to say that 118 is well and truly back, baby. And there's definitely no complaints for me because three and three quarter inch is like my ideal scale. It just is easier to collect. You can get more of them. You can army build a lot easier. And it's just all around such a great scale to build figures and vehicles in. Now, as for Chief here, he can hold his weapon pretty well. It's a little bit of a small groove to actually get his uh, thumb and hand to grab onto there. But once you get it, he will hold it fairly well. Uh, you can also, if you needed to, you could have him grab onto the hand guard there, which technically isn't where he's supposed to grab. But if you're in a rush or something like that, you definitely could just do that if you just want an easy pose. And there you go. He could hold it just like that, and it looks pretty darn good, actually. Not, not bad at all. He's definitely ready to blow away some Covenant with this look right here. And then again, if he's riding on the mongoose or whatever, you can just slot it right there back onto his back. Now, as for the articulation of this figure, we have a dumbbell joint up at the neck. So you don't get much side to side just because of the way the neck is sculpted. But you get a pretty good back, a pretty good forward. And of course, you can do all kinds of side to side tilting and looking and, you know, all that good stuff there. At the shoulders, you have a swivel as well as a hinge. And the hinge allows you to get only about that far up just because of the armor. But that's not all that big of a deal because that is still pretty good articulation for such a bulky armored spaceman. You know, those guys with all the bulky armor tend to get less good articulation than others. But at the same time, that's still pretty good. And that definitely gets what you need out of the character. There's a single jointed elbow with a hinge and a swivel. So you can hinge it up to about 90, swivel it around as much as you like. And then down at the wrist, we have a hinge and a swivel this time and up and a down here as well as an up and a down here. So that's really nice to see. You definitely need those up and down swivels or prefer those up and down swivels on a weapon holding hand. It just gives you a more natural look to it and it can actually make the posing a little bit easier. You know, if you have the wrist up like this, it's nice to be able to drop the hand down like that. Then moving down to the torso, we have a ball jointed torso. Gives you a really good range of motion there. Forward crunch, back, side to side. Really nice there. Again, good for those dynamic poses, especially if you're into toy photography or just want a really nice action pose when it's on your shelf. At the hips, we have a ball joint as well as a thigh swivel. So you can bring it up to there, out to there, which is really impressive. Back to about there, and then you can swivel the thigh if you need to reposition that for certain poses. The knees, impressively enough, come double jointed, so you can bend them down to there and then all the way back to there, which is really cool. It's a little bit awkward, like I mentioned with the Spartan Mark 7 review. There is a little bit of like a right angle there where you kind of just lose the knee. It just turns into a very exposed joint there, which is okay. It's not a it's not a deal breaker again. It just is a small little thing where I'd prefer that that was sculpted in a way where it was a little bit more hidden but still not a big deal at all. It's really awesome to see that level of articulation on a three and three quarter inch figure. And this little pad here does help that knee look a little bit more natural. Down at the ankle, we have a hinge and a rocker. So the hinge gets you back to there, forward to there, which is really impressive the way that they've allowed this foot armor to kind of come up and over the shin armor. It's really cool. And then you have the rocker, which lets you get nice side to side action, allowing the trooper or whichever character to stand up straight, even when doing a little bit more of a, a split pose. That does it for all of the articulation. We'll just take one last look at this beautiful figure. I think it looks really, really cool. One thing that I did forget to mention is just the nice dry brush weathering that they've done on this figure. There's a lot of little silver chipping and detailing going on on the peaks of the armor 
which looks really good. It's not overdone. It's just done in small areas where there would actually be typically weathering on a character like this, especially one who has seen as much combat as Master Chief. But yeah, really awesome figure, really crisp paint detail, and overall, definitely pick this up, whether it's the single carded or a double pack or a triple pack as we've seen from Amazon, or the vehicle pack in you can get master chief in quite a number of different packs right now and it is a really solid figure to get now for a quick size comparison here he is next to a standard fortnite figure it does actually make sense in a human to spartan ratio that the fortnite figure is a bit shorter because spartans were pretty tall in canon in lore so it does fit that he is taller you can see here on this vintage and very hard to see on camera ruler that the Spartan actually stands at about four and three fourths inches tall, whereas the Fortnite figure stands at about four inches tall. So it does fit pretty well with a um, human proportion scale, all that kind of stuff. I do like that they've kept that in mind. So you could actually cross over into multiple different lines between Fortnite and Halo and the scale would actually line up. And here he is next to the Brute Captain. I think it is a Brute Captain. I could be wrong, but the Brute, the Brute figure in the single carded release. Here he is next to him. A really nice scale comparison between these two, I think. Like, you really want the Brutes to be imposing and scary like they are in some of the games. And so that is a really nice uh, balance that they've created by making this figure so tall and imposing. I think it's awesome. And then finally, just for you Bluegrass fans, here he is next to a standard harmonica. He's a pretty good stand-in as a Marine or something like that. Now that my poor attempt at humor is out of the way, let's take a look at the Mongoose and see what all it has in store since this is completely new to me. I haven't really seen any reviews of this or anything about it. I've kind of tried to keep myself in the dark so that my opinion on this could be as true as possible, as raw as possible. And from what I'm seeing here, I really, really like this. It's got a lot of great detail going on. It feels good in hand, like it's it's definitely heavy, it's well made, it's not just going to fall apart. Uh, it's not meant to, and it's not going to. I do appreciate that. Taking a look here, there's a lot of really great detail going on. The UNSC logos here and here and here, as well as some nice silver dry brushing that gives it a nice weathered, battle-hardened look. That's pretty much going on all over the uh, the carriage of this vehicle. I don't know what you'd want to call that. You've got a steering assembly, a seat here, some feet pegs there for the character to uh, control the vehicle. Then back here you have a seat and some foot pegs and a hand grip there for another character to ride shotgun, if you will, on the back of the mongoose, just like in-game. I'm not terribly familiar if this is based off of the Infinite or Halo 4 or Halo 5 mongoose. It kind of has some Halo Reach vibes, at least in this front end. I'm assuming that this is like the brand new version of the Mongoose. I know we've seen new iterations with pretty much every single game, uh, since Halo 3 that is. But yeah, it definitely looks really nice. You can obviously have two characters ride on it. We'll try that out a little bit later in the video because I do have some other Spartan figures that can fit on this. But yeah, it's it looks really good. There's a lot of great detail, a lot of great weathering going on. Uh, one thing that I did notice is that these wheels are actually independently uh, on a swivel, I guess. So, I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to jack up the end of your mongoose, you could have it like that. But I guess it is supposed to simulate kind of a suspension system in the mongoose. So you can go from there all the way to right there, which is pretty cool, honestly. I mean, if you wanted to, you could have it back up like that. Um, you could have it uh, doing a wheelie, that's for sure. You could have it doing a wheelie mongoose. I do like that, but overall this build is really solid and highly, highly detailed. The only thing for right now to compare it to in scale is the Warthog. Again, I didn't really do a review on this because the footage went bad, but I think that's a pretty fair scale comparison. I, you know, in game it's kind of iffy if it's exactly one to one in terms of actual scaling, but I think that's pretty good. The Mongoose is a fairly small vehicle, but still bulky, and the Warthog is uh, it's a warthog, so I think that these are both pretty good compared to each other. They fit well within the scale. But now let's try and fit an extra character on this mongoose. Now to get two figures on here, we're going to have to bring in another Spartan, and for this I'm just going to use my other Master Chief here. Um, hey, how's it going, man? Yeah, you look pretty good. Uh, yeah, they're clones. That's what they are. They're clones of Spartans. Imagine how effective that would have been in the uh, Human Covenant War. But anyways, yeah, let's try and get these guys on here. We'll use this Chief as the driver, 
and see how well he will fit on there. You can set him on there pretty much like this, maybe bend the knees a little bit more, and then his hands will just snap on there. And he fits on pretty good. You can, you know, finesse the, uh, the arms and the hands a little bit more to get them into the pose that you precisely want. But I think the scale is there. He looks pretty good on that. Um, I'd have to look at like in-game screenshots to see if that's actually the scale proportion that it should be. But yeah, that looks pretty good. And then for the back seat, uh, again, I don't really know if this is supposed to be like a seat or is he supposed to like stand on it the way that they do in like Halo 3 because I haven't really played any of the new games. Like I've mentioned in previous reviews, I kind of fell off after Halo 4. So, I mean, he can sit on there like that if you so choose or I suppose you could have him... Let's see if you can get the feet to peg onto there, like that. And just like that, you've got two Spartans riding on the mongoose. Pretty similar to in-game. I'm not sure, again, if he's supposed to be sitting or if he's supposed to be facing this way, or maybe they change in-game. I, I really don't know, but yeah, that looks really, really cool. I think the way that they fit on there is really nice. The foot pegs on the back here are really nice to keep this figure in place when he's standing there. And then this guy, you know, he's got the handlebars to hold on to, so there's not really a risk of him falling off. But he still holds his position really well, and I think that looks fantastic. When I was kind of messing around with the posing on this, I also realized that you could, you know, kind of bring up one rear wheel like this, and that would give you kind of a cool action pose if you were displaying this on your shelf. That way one wheel would be elevated off the ground, and it'd be like it's... I don't know, doing some sort of ramp or something like that. So that's kind of cool for just your posing, your toy photography, whatever you're doing with this uh, set. And of course, at the end of the day, this is a toy. This is something that kids are going to want for Christmas. And so this also really does roll really well. Like I could see somebody, you know, on their kitchen floor or whatever, and you could push that and it would roll really, really cool, honestly. Like that is another aspect of this, that it still has a lot of play features, obviously, collectors are going to buy this i'm going to buy this but it's also something that a kid is going to have and it's definitely got the playability that should be there in something like this but anyways i think that will just about do it for this review of the master chief and mongoose uh two pack or not a two pack but rather a vehicle pack the master chief and mongoose vehicle pack uh, overall, it looks really awesome. Definitely something worth picking up. The details there, the playability is there, the durability is there, and it is just an awesome set to have. As always, links down in the description to all of my social media accounts, as well as my merch page, as well as the address to my PO box. If you send anything into the channel, I will do an unboxing here on the channel. If you wait to the end of this video, there will be like a playlist that'll pop up, you know, somewhere over here. That'll take you to my Halo playlist where you can see all the reviews of the other figures coming out in this Jazzwares line. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in learning more about these figures. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you all in the next video.